We're going into a series called uh, Judges today, and, and uh, there's so many examples from Scripture of this, what not to do. We have a record. You know, it's so great when we can learn lessons from others, isn't it? Some of us are too hard-headed, and we had to bump our head a lot Okay, I should, have been, I should have learned from a lot of examples before me, but everyone has to learn on their own. But when we can learn lessons from others, oh, we go further faster. Do you understand? We, go, we honestly, we move further faster. We, we gain maturity, wisdom in this life when we learn from others. And so here we have the book of Judges and... Uh, it, we're going to be talking about this for over the next six weeks and learning about different judges, and, and uh, Samson's going to be in there, and actually there's a movie coming out, Samson's coming out, uh, February 15th, it was just how we planned it, no, that wasn't our plan, but anyhow, there's a movie actually coming out with Samson as well, but uh, we're going to look at these different judges. The, the book of Judges, how many years do you think it covered? Any guesses? Couple hundred? What else? You're like, I have no idea what you just tell us. <laughs> it's like football in jeopardy. I don't know. You know, some of you saw that probably this week. Um, <clears throat> anyhow, 325 years is what the book of Judges covered. And uh, sometimes we think, oh God, you're taking forever. You know, sometimes you ever feel that way? You're like, God, I, I prayed for it yesterday. You know, why don't I have an answer today? And, and the whole thing is that God is, God is on a different timeline. But I believe that timeline is shortened when our hearts are surrendered to God and our actions line up with his word. Hearts that are surrendered to the Lord. Uh, we move further faster. So uh, this morning it's called Playing with Fire. How many people like to play with fire? <laughs> you're like, I'm not mentioning this here. I know where you're going <laughs> with this. You know, especially as kids, we, we loved to play with fire. I remember my dad had a matchbook, matchbook collection that he should have never given me. <laughs> you know, here, I mean, there was John F. Kennedy's picture on some of these matchbox, you know, these, anyhow, matchbooks, and uh, this whole shoebox of old matchbooks that my dad gave to me at probably nine or ten, and a neighbor caught me lighting them in the backyard, and I got in trouble over that, obviously. But as a kid, you know, you, 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 you like fire, you're mesmerized by fire, and you're like, wow, that's just, that's amazing, and uh, Fourth of July comes around, and I know we've got pretty civilized, you know, it's not like it used to be, come on. I mean, I can remember at church, at church, there were some funky things that went on in the 70s at church, okay? But I can remember at church as a kid watching Brian Bodkin and Lonnie Harrigus shoot fire Roman candles at each other. Not good. I remember Lonnie had nylon shorts on, and one of those things hit him right there in the nylon shorts. And he was, because his shorts were no longer there, okay? Um, playing with fire is usually not a good thing. Sometimes we have to suffer the consequences because we've played with fire, okay? And that was clearly what happened uh, with Lonnie. But have you ever had to suffer the consequences because of your actions, you didn't study for the test, and all of a sudden, <laughs> the test was today. And then you try to get the teacher on some tangent. I know you've done it. You try to get them to talk about something not related for the entire class period to somehow they won't remember about the test that they scheduled. How many did that? Oh, man, you lie. We, 
We've all had consequences for actions. We've hit send on an email that we should have never sent. A text message that, ah, that was a little harsh. Shouldn't have sent that one. Clean up an aisle 10, right? Made a mess. There's all these situations. But honestly, there's, there's all these examples of what not to do. We see them all the time. We see them on the news. We see the affairs on the news. And all of those things are warnings to us. And we have scripture that is, in a lot of cases, great warning for us. Stop. Don't go there. Don't do that. And so that's where we are this morning with the book of Judges. And um, the big idea is this, to choose, ma- choose to make changes now to eliminate negative consequences in the future. Choose to make the changes now. See, 10 years from now, if you could look back at yourself and say, stop doing blank, what would that be? Don't do that. What would it be? And so I hope that you're able to think these things through over the next several weeks. What what needs to happen? What changes need to be made? What can I do differently now to eliminate negative consequences for the future so that I can be standing in front of the Lord and hear this, well done, good and faithful servant. Well done. That's what we all want to hear, isn't it? Isn't it? That's what we want to hear. And there's all these temptations and things in life. And so here we have scripture that lays things out for us. And it's so plain oftentimes. Proverbs 22, 3 says this, a prudent person foresees danger and takes precautions. A prudent person foresees danger and takes precautions. And so we're looking at at judges and a little background here. Uh, Joshua had taken over from Moses. There was this baton passing, in a sense. Uh, Joshua had been his assistant. Moses died, and Joshua took over. And here, there's another baton passing that really that's trying to happen here. Joshua is about to die. And in Joshua 23 and 24, this is where we get in so many houses. In fact, there's a house uh, not too far from here that Cindy and I love driving by it because right over the top of their doorway, it says this, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That's out of the book of Joshua, Joshua 24, 15. And so um, many of your houses probably have that scripture uh, in it. And so Joshua told them, you know, he, he tried to warn them, hey, look, follow the Lord. Don't turn from the left or to the right. Follow the Lord. Follow this book of instruction. And we have the book of Judges, and we see what happened. Everyone with Joshua that made that a commitment, I believe that they were serious, but they drifted away from God. They drifted away from God. They did exactly what they were told not to do. What they were told not to do. So here we are, Judges chapter 2, starting at verse 6. After Joshua sent the people away, each of the tribes left to take possession of the land allotted to them. They, were, they had entered the promised land. This was, this was uh, what God had promised. Okay, that's why it's called the promised land. And so they're entering this land, and there's all sorts of wicked people there with customs and, and, and just wicked, wicked behavior. We'll talk about this in a, a little bit. And so he's telling them, after Joshua sent the people away, each of the tribes left to take possession of the land allotted to them. And the Israelites served the Lord throughout the lifetime of Joshua and the leaders who outlived him. Those who had seen all the great things the Lord had done for Israel. Joshua, son of Nun, which I just got to tell you this, um, that's his dad, okay? It's not like, because some, anyhow, you get it. You're like, Joshua, son of Nun. He didn't have anything. Oh, no, son of Nun, N-U-N. All right. 
Joshua, son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died at the age of 110. They buried him in the land he had been allocated at Timnath Sirah in the hill country of Ephraim, north of Mount Gaash. After that generation died, listen to this, after that generation died, another generation grew up who did not acknowledge the Lord or remember the mighty things he had done for Israel. The Israelites did evil in the Lord's sight and served the images of Baal. They abandoned the Lord, the God of their ancestors, who had brought them out of Egypt. They went after other gods, worshiping the gods of the people around them, and they angered the Lord. They abandoned the Lord to serve Baal and the images of Astra. This made the Lord burn with anger against Israel. So he handed them over to raiders who stole their possessions. He turned them over to their enemies all around, and they were no longer able to resist them. Every time Israel went out to battle, the Lord fought against them. (laughs) Do you catch this? Every time Israel went out to battle, the Lord fought against them, causing them to be defeated, just as he had warned. And the people were in great distress. Then the Lord raised up judges, also a name, another name would be deliverer, raised up judges to rescue the Israelites from their attackers. Yet Israel did not listen to the judges, but prostituted themselves by worshiping other gods. They were unfaithful. Okay? They were unfaithful. How quickly they turned away from the path of their ancestors who walked in obedience to the Lord's commands. Whenever the Lord raised up a judge over Israel, he was with that judge and rescued the people from their enemies throughout the judge's lifetime. For the Lord took pity on his people who were burdened by oppression and suffering. But when the judge died, the people returned to their corrupt ways, behaving worse than those who had lived before them. They went after other gods, serving and worshiping them, and they refused to give up their evil practices and stubborn ways. So the Lord burned with anger against Israel. He said, because these people have violated my covenant, covenant which I made with them and their ancestors, and have ignored my commands, I will no longer drive out the nations that Joshua left unconquered when he died. Israel became stuck in a cycle of sin, judgment, and repentance. Sin, judgment, and then repentance. And God would raise up another deliverer and then go back to their ways after that judge God used to deliver them. Heavenly Father, we we thank you so much, God, for all the warnings in Scripture. God, the challenge is always for us to adjust our lives to your word. God, we want to be faithful. Lord, we just we just prayed, <laughs> we just talked about um, how we want to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. And so God, we have all these warnings, and God, I pray that you draw our hearts to you today. Help us to see you. Help us to see who we are in light of your word, the God you long for relationship with your people. And so God, we lean into you today. Have your way, we pray, in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Why did Israel get into trouble? What did Israel do to bring on these negative consequences of the Lord? The first thing is this they no longer acknowledged the Lord. They no longer acknowledged the Lord. Um, Have you seen someone that you knew? Like you saw them, you were walking toward them. And all of a sudden, they completely ignored you. If you're breathing on the planet, you've had that happen at least once in your life. They refuse to acknowledge you. They're like, I don't know you. (laughs) Okay, and they might be with another group of friends that you weren't cool enough, right? You weren't cool enough, and so you're like, you know, they're like this to you, and you're like, but I thought we were tight. Thought we were good. I, I remember as a kid. Uh, 
I remember as a kid, I, I'd made plans to, I was going to spend the night at a friend's house, and the kids always wondered, our kids always wondered, why can't we do sleepovers? Anyhow, so I had, had a plan. I was going to spend the night with a friend, and here I'm packing up my, all my stuff, and I'm getting ready, and then he calls and says, hey, uh, you can't spend the night because I've asked Scott to spend the night instead of you. You know what I'm saying? Like, what? I want to hurt you, right? We've all had something like that happen. Well, in this case, it wasn't a friend. It was God. They no longer acknowledged the Lord. Joshua and the leadership had died And those that had said yes to following the Lord walked away from their commitment. They walked away. God, I don't know you anymore. Judges 2.10, after that generation died, another generation grew up who did not acknowledge the Lord or remember the mighty things he had done for Israel. The people had gone on with life and no longer knew the Lord. They no longer sought him. They no longer pursued him. They were no longer listening for his voice. They walked away. It's interesting because here they were walking into the promised land and God had given them great victory. In fact, if you read, I don't have time to read all of it, but if you look back at Joshua 23 and 24, Joshua laid out a lot for them and and the Lord it, said it, was, it says this, it says, it wasn't your swords. It says that the Lord brought terror into the hearts of the enemies. It wasn't the swords. It was the Lord who gave them victory. Some trust in chariots, some trust in horses, but we will trust in the name of the Lord our God. Okay? It was the Lord. And so oftentimes after a period of victory or blessing, people choose to forget the Lord. It happens with us individually. It happens with us in our families at times. It happens nationally. Great blessing. All of a sudden, I don't need God. I can download this song in a nanosecond. I don't need the Lord. I'm good. And all of a sudden we forget and we begin to walk away. We begin to drift from who gave the blessing in the first place, which is Almighty God. It's one of the greatest dangers today. All the abundance that we have. Psalm 14.1 says this, only fools say in their hearts, there is no God. Toby Mac has a new song out. Some of you heard it even this morning, down the hallway of South County. I need you. And he starts going through every scenario in his life that he needs the Lord. We need the Lord. So that was the first thing I did. Why did Israel get into trouble? Second thing is this, they chose to do evil. They chose to do wrong. Um, Have there been times in your life where you've chosen to do wrong? (laughs) Everybody in here. And, you know, we got, got our hands slapped or worse, right? Where we got into trouble. And sometimes, honestly, when I think of some of the things that I did... I'm like, ah, I had a summarized Article 15, I don't have time to go in that whole story, but I had a summar, summarized Article 15 in the, in the Army, and I had seven days extra duty and 14 days restriction to the barracks, okay? And during that time of restriction to the barracks, I borrowed a friend's truck, came down in my jammies, Acted like I was just coming down, getting a drink of water. 
and got in that truck and drove 25 miles away to see my girlfriend, whose name's Cindy. All the girls I've ever met are named Cindy. <laughs> and she was worth it, <laughs> this Cindy. Anyhow, but I look back at that time and I'm like, oh, you're an idiot. I mean, if I could go back to that time, I'd take myself like this and I'd be like, what is wrong with you? Like back to the future or something. Um, they chose to do evil. They left the truth. They left the truth. They left the truth. They left the truth. They left the truth of God's instruction, his righteous standard, and began to live contrary to it. They walked away from the Lord and they walked away from his truth. They moved from I don't need you, that was the acknowledging, not acknowledging, they moved away from I don't need you to I don't care. Speak to the hand, God. I don't care. They began to do as they saw fit. This was a theme throughout the book of Judges. It's a sad one. The Israelites did evil in the Lord's sight. Judges 17, 6 says this. In those days, Israel had no king. Everyone did as they saw fit. How would you like that on your tombstone? None of us in here. In those days, Israel had no king. Everyone did as they saw fit. They no longer followed the Lord and his ways. Deuteronomy eleven twenty two says this. Be careful. This was all beforehand. So here's the deal. Just like us today, we have God's word right here in front of us. We have it. And we can do this to it. La, 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 ha, ha. Sorry, Pee Wee Herman got in there, I think. <clears throat> they had the warnings. They had it, just like we do today. Deuteronomy 11, 20, 22, be careful, be careful to obey all these commands I'm giving you. Show love to the Lord your God by walking in his ways and holding tightly to him. Then the Lord will drive out all the nations ahead of you though they are much greater and stronger than you, and, and you will take over their land. They were told exactly what would happen. Write a little assignment out and say, look at Joshua chapter 23 and 24 this week, and you can see. They were warned. They were told exactly what would happen if they turned away from the Lord. And then we just read later how it happened. And it took all this time, 325 years. They're thinking, Here, here's how we live. So I've chosen to do what I want to do when I want to do it. I've said this to God, and I think, didn't matter yesterday. Didn't matter yesterday. They're like, oh, two days, didn't matter. Three days, didn't matter. God loves you. He's laid everything out for all of us. And he's saying, choose me. Choose me. Why did Israel get into trouble? They served other gods. Have you ever seen someone start to hang out with a new group of people? And all of a sudden, you don't recognize them anymore. Like, eh, 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 eh. serious crash and burn. You're like, what in the world? What happened? The 
The Israelites started hanging out with a new group of people who didn't serve the Lord. They were supposed to drive them out. God was going to empower them to drive them out, and in many cases did. But as their hearts turned away from God, he began to withdraw his help. The Israelites' hearts became entwined with people who didn't follow God and did whatever they wanted. They did whatever they saw fit to do. They turned away from God's standard. In fact, the Canaanites had no standards. They did what they felt to do. They were an evil and a moral people. Judges 2, 11 through 13 says, The Israelites did evil in the Lord's sight and served the images of Baal. They abandoned the Lord, the God of their ancestors, who brought them out of Egypt. They, were, they went after other gods, worshiping the gods of the people around them, and they angered the Lord. They abandoned the Lord to serve Baal and the images of Ashtoreth. These Canaanite gods, Baal was the god of storms and rains. He was thought to control vegetation and agriculture. Ashtoreth was the goddess of love, war, and fertility. So why, why was this wrong? Well, first of all, they weren't serving the Lord. They were serving these gods that the Canaanites, these other people, had chosen to serve. They weren't serving the one true God. And the Canaanites were polytheistic, okay? It means they worshipped many gods. So you could just add the Lord to it and it wouldn't matter kind of deal. Sure, we'll add the Lord to that. No problem. We got all these other gods over here. Let's just include yours. But the Lord is a jealous God. So why was this wrong? That was one reason. Another reason is this. Worship of these gods involved temple prostitution and even child sacrifice. Does that make your skin crawl? It makes mine crawl. I've been to places in Israel where they did this, where child sacrifice had happened. The Israelites abandoned the Lord to worship other gods. They forgot there was only one God. They forgot. They turned away. Um, we read in Luke, the devil was tempting Jesus in the desert. And uh, he told Jesus, you know, I'll give you all the kingdoms of this world if you just worship me. In Luke 4, 8, Jesus replied, the scriptures say, you must worship the Lord your God and serve only him. And serve only him. So let's talk about the danger today, okay? The danger today is this cultural drift to worship other gods. Now, there may, I mean, you're, you're like, well, I'm not worshiping Baal. I'm not worshiping Ashtoreth. But I mean, the gods of today, the sports god, the work god, the self god, the money god, we just have other gods that are temptations to us. And it's not Baal and Ashtoreth. In fact, some of you this morning are like, that's stupid. And I would have to agree with you. But our hearts, the enemy... He just changes his strategy. So here we are in the 21st century, and he's putting all these things in front of us to try to draw our hearts away from the Lord. So the sports God, the work God, the self God, and the money God. And then we have Mark 12, 30, and you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. There's a generation of believers today I said believers who've forgotten the Lord. Truth is whatever you feel is right. There's no absolute truth. This is the air of our culture today, and I will stand forever and say it is not right. God's word is truth. His standard is truth. It will forever be. Heaven and earth will pass away, but his word 
will never, will never pass away. And he's longing for a people who love him. And, you know, I was with somebody uh, recently from the Hindu faith. And uh, they basically were uh, just talking about how Christianity had no impact. You want to know the reason why? He's like, the divorce rate of Christians is 50 to 60%. He's like, you know what it is for us in India? I'm like, he's like, two. He had my ear. There's a cultural shift where we take on the values of our culture and we begin to serve other gods and ignore the commitment to our God and in some cases, the commitment to our spouse. The enemy's plan is to get us to make little compromises. A little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit here. To all of a sudden, the jumps, you don't see them anymore, right? You don't see them anymore. The enemy wants sin to become normal so that we no longer recognize it. A little theft here, a little gossip here, a little flirting here, a little sexual immorality here. Make it a day, two days, three days, two weeks, two months. I'm good. There's a day of reckoning coming. And the Lord loves you, and he wants all of us to be standing before him and for him to be able to say, well done, good and faithful servant. I know a lot of people, um, the scenario in my mind where someone was having an affair for five years and the enemy whispers in your ear, you're good, don't worry about it. Nothing will change if you get caught. And those are the same people that lost their job, their relationship, their kids. Oh, this is your brain on drugs. I don't know if you remember those commercials or not. And this is what it does to your family. The consequences are huge. So let's talk about the consequences. (laughs) Oh, yeah, Pastor Randall, let's make it sound better. The consequences of turning away from the Lord. See, here's the, deal. here's the reason why we have to talk about the consequences. They're devastating. They're devastating. And we need to think through consequences so that it actually keeps us away from doing the wrong thing. So, for the Israelites, the Lord withdrew his help doesn't mean he abandoned them, okay? He was still there, but like a loving parent, stepped back, withdrew his help. The Lord fought against them. He allowed the people to be ransacked by the enemy because they rejected him. The Lord allowed difficulty in their life. Here, here's the deal. Why? So that they would turn back to him. So that they would recognize we need God. It wasn't just to be mean. It's like, oh, watch him now. Come on. Oh, oh, yeah. Like God was getting excited over watching them fail. He wanted their hearts desperately and withdrew his help and allowed difficulty in their lives so that they would come back to the Lord. See, Scripture says the wages of sin is death. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. That was the consequences for the Israelites, and then there's the consequences for us today uh, as well. And um, 
we didn't even talk about, you know, a lot about the consequences with family and, and things like that, but um, consequences, it's good to think them through. We have all these warnings, and God longs for us. He longs for us. So what do you do if you've been living a life that's not surrendered to the Lord? What do you do? And so we're going to go through that. If the worship team, oh, there they are, <clears throat> would come. Um, the first thing is to confess, to confess your sin and, and, and just admit that you're wrong. And sometimes that is hard to do. Am, am, I, am, am I speaking to my crowd today? You know, sometimes isn't it hard? Isn't it hard to admit when you're wrong? Isn't it hard to say you're sorry? And that's what God wants from us. He wants us to look at our lives in the mirror of his word And it exposes our hearts, it exposes what's wrong, and then he wants us to have godly sorrow that leads to repentance, where we confess, Lord, what I'm doing here is wrong. Lord, my thoughts, I've been flirting with things in my thoughts, God, that are not right. I'm wrong. We confess our sin, and then we turn away from that behavior. Now, listen, some of you today, you need help to do that. Just like I have need help, needed help in my life at times as well, to not only confess something, but to bring a friend along to say, hey, I've been struggling in this area, would you hold me accountable? So that I don't go, so I don't go that way any longer. Because sometimes... When we're battling things on our own, it's hard to do. It's hard to do, especially if there's any addiction, history or addiction in your life. So we're turning away from sin, and then we're committing to follow Jesus with our life. We're saying, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, forgive me. I choose to make you Savior. And Lord, I choose to follow you. And when we do these things, this is where everything begins to change. I've heard it said before, I know some of you like country music in here. I told you a few weeks back I wasn't a fan, but I did like that one song by Red Marlowe, Pray. But when we come to Jesus, it's almost like playing a country song backwards. Get your dog back. Get your relationships back. Get your life back. In all seriousness, the Lord makes all the difference. And he longs for people that love him, that want to serve him. He's looking for a people that will say, yes, God, use me, whatever you want to do with my life. He's looking for a people who are faithful, 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 faithful. And so are there areas of your life today where you're playing with fire? Things in your life that you know or wrong. In fact, the Holy Spirit has been speaking to you and you've been ignoring him and he's like, no, don't go there. No, don't do that. He's been reminding you. He's been reminding you that he's with you. He loves you that much. And so here's the thing today. I want to give you an opportunity today to make things right with God. Some of you need to say yes for the first time. You need to say, yes, God. <laughs> I surrender my life to you. 
forgive me of my sin. I make you Lord and Savior. And some of you in this room, you've known the Lord for a long time, but you've drifted. And the Lord is saying, come home. Come home. He longs for a relationship with you. He longs to bring healing to your life. He longs to make you whole. And he's calling your name today. I'm going to have you guys stand today just to make it easier. Today, if the Holy Spirit is ringing your bell, where you know he's got your attention today. I want you to pray this prayer. We're going to pray it together, and then the worship band is going to lead us here. And I want to create just a little bit of space for you to make things right with God. Maybe you need to turn around in your seat and just kneel for a little bit. That's okay. Okay, maybe you need to come down front here. Maybe you need to say, yes, God. See, some, some today you can't, Here's the deal, you can't even stay in your seat because you know you need to step forward to make things right. There's like something that happens when you make a move towards God. He's with you in this moment. He loves you dearly, and he longs for your heart today. And so let's all pray together this prayer. I mean this from the depth of your heart today. Say, dear Jesus, forgive me. I make things right with you right now. Change me. I choose to follow you. Help me to do it. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're going to go.